For many years, the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II was seen as the undisputed king of the skies. It was the future of air combat, a true fifth-generation fighter that seemed to leave all rivals in the dust. Its most famous feature, of course, is its stealth technology. This advanced design allows the F-35 to become nearly invisible to enemy radar, giving its pilot a massive advantage. They could see their opponents long before their opponents could see them, effectively owning the airspace. This first-look, first-shot capability was considered a game-changer, making the aircraft seem unbeatable in any potential conflict. Nations around the world lined up, believing that owning the F-35 was the only way to maintain a modern and effective air force. The F-35's power was not just about being hard to see, it was also designed to be a flying intelligence node, a powerful computer in the sky. Its advanced sensors and systems collect vast amounts of information from the battlefield. This data is then fused together, creating a complete and easy-to-understand picture for the pilot. This level of situational awareness was unprecedented, allowing a single F-35 pilot to manage complex combat scenarios with incredible clarity. This network-centric warfare capability, where jets share information seamlessly with each other and with ground forces, solidified its reputation. It wasn't just a fighter, it was the nerve center of a modern military operation. This perception of invincibility was carefully cultivated and widely accepted within military and defense circles. The F-35 program was a massive undertaking, backed by the full industrial and technological might of the United States and its key allies. The argument was simple. If you wanted to fly with the best and ensure interoperability with NATO and NORAD partners, you needed the F-35. Any other choice was seen as a step down, a compromise that could put a nation's security at risk. The jet represented the pinnacle of aerial technology, a symbol of a nation's commitment to cutting-edge defense. The narrative was clear and powerful, leaving little room for any serious competitor to challenge its throne. For a long time, no one seriously questioned this narrative. The technological leap from fourth-generation fighters to the fifth-generation F-35 seemed too vast to bridge. Other aircraft might be faster or more agile in a classic dogfight, but the F-35's stealth and sensor fusion were believed to make those advantages irrelevant. Why would agility matter if you were shot down before you even knew a threat was there? This line of thinking dominated procurement decisions across the globe, creating a seemingly unstoppable momentum for the American jet. The idea that a smaller, non-stealthy fighter from Sweden could ever pose a serious challenge seemed almost unthinkable to many of the world's top defense experts. Just when the F-35's dominance seemed absolute, a surprising challenger emerged from Sweden, the Saab Gripen E. While it is technically a fourth-generation fighter and lacks the all-aspect stealth of the F-35, the Gripen brought a different philosophy to the table. Its designers focused on countering the F-35's strengths through other means. Instead of hiding from radar, the Gripen was built to master the electronic spectrum. It boasts an incredibly sophisticated electronic warfare suite designed to jam, deceive, and disrupt enemy sensors. The thinking was that if the Gripen could make the F-35's advanced radar blind, then the stealth advantage would be significantly reduced. This approach began to turn heads among military analysts. The Gripen's most impressive feature is arguably its own version of sensor fusion. While the F-35 is famous for this capability, Saab has been working on it for over 50 years. In the Gripen E, this system has reached a new level of sophistication. It uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to automatically manage the aircraft's various sensors, fusing the data into a simple, task-based display for the pilot. This reduces the pilot's workload dramatically, allowing them to focus on the mission rather than managing complex systems. A Saab operational advisor even claimed this system could match the F-35's autonomous sensor management, effectively leveling the playing field in terms of situational awareness. This advanced technology directly challenges the core premise of the F-35's superiority. The Gripen's powerful sensors and electronic warfare systems are specifically designed to detect and track low observable or stealthy targets. As one Saab expert put it, now that stealthy target is not so stealthy anymore. Now I can see you, and that means that you're in trouble. This bold claim suggests that stealth is not a cloak of permanent invisibility. Instead, it is another layer of defense that can be peeled back with the right technology. The Gripen was designed to be that technology, 
a dedicated stealth killer that could change the dynamics of modern air combat. The Gripen's design philosophy also emphasizes operational flexibility and ease of maintenance. It can operate from small dispersed air bases and even roadways, making it less vulnerable to a first strike on major military installations. It requires a smaller ground crew and can be refueled and rearmed in a matter of minutes, allowing for a much higher sortie rate. This practical real-world capability is a major selling point for countries that need a resilient and cost-effective air force. The Gripen proved that there was more than one way to build a top-tier fighter, shifting the conversation from a singular focus on stealth to a broader appreciation for electronic warfare and operational efficiency. The competition between the F-35 and the Gripen is not just about technology, it is also a fierce debate over cost, independence, and control. The F-35 is notoriously expensive, not only to purchase but also to fly and maintain over its lifetime. These staggering costs have caused many governments to pause and reconsider their budgets. The Gripen, on the other hand, was designed from the ground up to be more affordable. Its lower operational costs mean that countries can afford to fly their jets more often, ensuring their pilots are better trained and more proficient. This economic argument is a powerful one, especially for nations that need to balance defense spending with other pressing needs. This debate became very real in countries like Canada. As of early 2025, Canada had already committed to buying 88 F-35ES and was building the necessary infrastructure. However, a significant political debate continued with figures like Prime Minister Mark Carney suggesting that a switch to the Gripen should be considered. The primary argument was to reduce dependency on the United States. Proponents of the Gripen argued that choosing the Swedish jet would give Canada more autonomy over its defense capabilities. This conversation highlighted a growing concern among U.S. allies about being locked into a single foreign-controlled defense ecosystem, where decisions made in Washington could directly impact their own national security. The issue of technological sovereignty is at the heart of this debate. The F-35 program is tightly controlled by the United States. All major upgrades, software updates, and data are managed through a U.S.-led system. This means that user nations have limited ability to modify the aircraft or integrate their own national technology without American approval. The Gripen E, in contrast, is designed with an open architecture. This allows buying nations to have full control over the jet's software and systems. They can perform their own upgrades and integrate their own weapons independently and quickly, a concept Saab calls technological sovereignty. This is a major attraction for countries that want to maintain control over their most critical defense assets. However, the argument for independence is not so simple. Critics point out that the Gripen still relies on critical US-made components, most notably its General Electric F-14 engine and many of its weapons systems. These parts are subject to US export controls and regulations. This means that even with a Gripen fleet, a country like Canada would still be dependent on the United States for sustainment and key upgrades. Proponents of the F-35 in Canada argue that switching now would cause logistical chaos and undermine interoperability with key allies. This complex web of dependencies shows that the choice between the two jets involves deep strategic calculations about a nation's future alliances and its place in the world. The showdown between the F-35 and the Gripen has fundamentally changed the global conversation about what makes a modern fighter jet effective. For a decade, the answer was simple. Stealth. The F-35's ability to evade detection was seen as the ultimate trump card. However, the Gripen's emergence as a credible competitor has introduced a more nuanced perspective. It demonstrated that a sophisticated combination of advanced electronic warfare, powerful sensors and superior data links could create a formidable counter to stealth. This has forced air forces around the world to reconsider their priorities, balancing the high cost of stealth against the clever and efficient capabilities of a jet like the Gripen. The F-35 remains a powerhouse, a true fifth-generation platform that excels as a quarterback in the sky. Its stealth and unparalleled sensor fusion give it an undeniable edge in gaining information superiority and executing a first strike. It is designed to penetrate the most heavily defended enemy airspace and share its intelligence across the entire network of allied forces. This makes it an invaluable asset, especially for a global power like the United States and its closest partners. 
Its strength lies in its ability to see everything without being seen, setting the stage for victory before the enemy even knows the fight has begun. It represents the peak of networked, stealth-based warfare. The Gripen E, on the other hand, represents a different path to air superiority. Lacking the F-35 stealth, it focuses on survivability through other means. It is a master of electronic combat, designed to disrupt and outsmart its opponents in the electromagnetic spectrum. Its strengths are its agility, low maintenance needs, high sortie rate, and the technological independence it offers to user nations. It is the perfect choice for countries that need a resilient, adaptable, and sovereign air force capable of defending their own territory effectively. The Gripen proves that a nation can achieve a world-class air defense capability without necessarily buying the most expensive, stealthiest jet on the market. Ultimately, the Gripen's rise did not dethrone the F-35, but it did shatter the illusion of its invincibility. It introduced a new paradigm, proving that there are multiple pathways to achieving air power in the 21st century. The competition has sparked a vital debate about cost versus capability, stealth versus electronic warfare, and dependency versus sovereignty. It forced a re-evaluation of what is truly essential for a modern air force. By presenting a compelling and technologically advanced alternative, the Saab Gripen has not only secured its own place in the market but has also made the entire strategic landscape richer and more complex, changing how nations think about air combat forever.